Fox 61 News at 5 starts now. And we begin with that weather watch alert here at 5 as we are tracking a severe storm threat across Connecticut. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Brent Harden. And I'm Sarah Sanchez. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, here's a live look at the radar from the Weather Watch Center as well as the conditions over downtown Hartford and New Haven. Some parts of the state saw showers earlier today, but could that extend into the evening? That's the big question. It's still pretty muggy out there. All right, so let's check in now with Chief Meteorologist Rachel Frank for a first look at the forecast. And Rachel, there's a lot to heat to talk about. About. There's yeah. some severe storms possibly to talk about, mm -hmm. but we also have some what looks like fairly widespread rain coming in tomorrow. Uh, that could help us all. Can't, uh, we can only dream, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. I think that tonight will be kind of hit or miss in nature, and then Friday evening may hold some better odds for everybody getting at least some showers. So we'll cross our fingers, the humidity sticking around too. Uh, let me show you guys what's going on. We have a severe thunderstorm watch just to the north of us that has just been issued about a minute ago. So a severe thunderstorm watch in effect for a lot of Massachusetts right now. And if you look to the northwest of us, you'll also see a severe thunderstorm watch that's in effect. Taking a look right now and kind of zooming in and giving you a closer look at what's going on across Connecticut, you'll see there is nothing moving through our state at this time. If we do end up getting a strong storm, and there's some indication that these storms may be weak enough that we just get some rain and no severe weather, but if we do, the window of time would be between 6 to 10 p.m. with the chance for strong gusty winds. So no Notice as we move through time here, some towns could get a tropical downpour, gusty winds, and also some vivid lightning, and others may get very little, if nothing at all. It is basically like rain roulette here moving forward. And again, 6 to 10 is the window where that's going to be most likely to happen. And then we're going to dry things out here moving forward. You'll see the Storm Prediction Center, though, has highlighted us here in Connecticut for a level 2 out of level 5 threat for severe weather, uh, meaning that they're thinking scattered severe storms. However, I think there are some conflicting factors, which is why they have not issued a watch for us. I think they're going to see how this line develops. So not high confidence in the threat for severe storms tonight. Heading through the day tomorrow, very humid, warm highs in the mid to upper 80s and a chance for showers developing. They could be widespread heading into tomorrow night. We can only hope we'll take a full look at your forecast and the weekend coming up. Thank you, Rachel. We're following developing news at five in Danbury, a heartbreaking scene there. Police say a mother killed her three children before taking her own life. Police discovered their bodies in the home on Whaley Street last night, but it's still not clear who found them before officers arrived. Fox 61's Tony Terzi has been in Danbury all day and joins us live near the scene with the very latest. Tony. There were lots of neighbors and local residents who showed up uh, a few minutes ago, we'll tell you more about that after the body of our story here. The home behind me on Whaley Street is the one where the four people were discovered deceased. It was about almost 24 hours ago when uh, a person in that home made the discovery. Lots of unanswered questions, but police today decided they weren't going to hold a press conference to answer any of them. A beautiful home and yard, including a robust garden and many activities for children. But looks can be deceiving. I'm about to go out with my girlfriend and we see cop cars, ambulance, fire department, everybody come down and we were just like, wow, something must have happened. Danbury police said they received a call at 630 Wednesday night for a welfare check at this residence on Whaley Street and that the male caller was distraught and crying. Three children ages 5 through 12 were dead, as was their 36 year old mother, Sonia Loja. It feels bad because, you know, the kids were really good kids. They're really friendly kids. You know, when you die by their way, hey, how you doing? And police say 12 year old Junior Panjon his 10-year-old sister, Jocelyn Panhone, and their five-year-old brother, Jeanneel Panhone, were strangled to death by their mother, who then went into this shed in the backyard and hung herself. <sighs> Something we're gonna have to live with now, just, you know, gotta take care of your family, hug the ones that you love. Two of the three children killed were students in Danbury Public Schools, and counseling will be available to students, staff, and families on Monday from 10 until noon at Westside Middle School 
and Morris Street School. I've lived here for 40 years, and this is a quiet neighborhood. I never seen anything like this. Front steps of 10 Whaley Street you can see with balloons and flowers. The steps starting to fill up within the last 15 or 20 minutes. Neighbors, local residents coming by, friends of the family. And coming up tonight on the Fox 61 News at 10, you'll hear from one of the very emotional neighbors who tells us who made the discovery of the three dead children inside their home. We're live here in Danbury. Tony Terzi, Fox 61 News. Great. Thank you, Tony. Well, fears are growing over a possible recession after new GDP numbers were released today. Now, the Commerce Department says the U.S. gross domestic product fell by nearly 1% from April to June. Fox 61's Ben Goldman joins us in studio now to break down today's report from the federal government. Brent and Sarah, today's GDP report is not a good sign for our economy, although it's hardly a surprise as we've seen high levels of inflation for several months now. The Commerce Department says our GDP fell by 0.9% in the second quarter of this year. That's smaller than 1.4% in the first quarter, which is January to March. However, back-to-back -back quarters with a declining GDP is one indicator of a recession. This comes a day after the Federal Reserve hiked interest rates again Wednesday. Here in Connecticut, the governor said today that there are many more factors to look at to assess the health of our economy, including labor. But also it involves, um, you know, factory orders. Also it involves unemployment. Our unemployment continues to go down, flat in the United States, but down in, in a, a state of Connecticut. I think those are all indications that, um, from my point of view, um, we're not in a recession yet, but I'm worried. Connecticut's unemployment rate was 4% in June, which is 3% lower than a year ago. The Federal Labor Department released its unemployment numbers today. Jobless claims were down slightly by 5,000, and 25,000 fewer people collected benefits as of last week. Fed Chair Jerome Powell says many economists point to strong labor markets as a reason that we aren't in a recession, at least not yet. If companies stop hiring and reduce payrolls, that would be a major sign that a recession is here. In the studio, I'm Ben Goldman, Fox 61 News. Hi, Ben, thank you. Uh, in less than two weeks now, Republican voters will pick which candidate they want to face incumbent Senator Richard Blumenthal in November's election. Fox 61 political reporter Emma Wolfhorst tells us about the GOP hopefuls in the primary. We've talked about what's at stake in this race, but who are these three primary candidates on the ballot and what do voters need to know? A clear divide in this race between endorsed party favorite Themis Claritus and the other candidates, Leora Levy and Peter Lamage. Both insinuate Claritus's views are more in line with Democrats than Republicans. We have two different backgrounds, and when I say center-left, it doesn't mean she's a, she's a socialist. But if you need another Blumenthal with an R next to her name, that would be Themis. Lamage ran twice for office unsuccessfully, trying for Secretary of the State in 2014 and Governor in 2018. Born in Albania, the Fairfield candidate is an attorney and businessman, but he's not the only attorney in the race. I know what the state of Connecticut is about. I understand it's the third small state, but it's a very diverse state. I have had the experience. I'm a proven fighter and I'm a proven winner. Also a practicing attorney, Claritus spent 22 years in Connecticut's House of Representatives, serving as their minority leader from 2014 to 2020. She touts being the only candidate in the race to win an election, saying her two decades of experience sets her apart. It's about one thing in this Republican primary. Who has the best chance to beat Dick Bloom? Because that's our goal, okay? That is the Republicans' goal, no matter what you believe in, no matter where you're from. Our goal is to beat Dick Blumenthal because he and Joe Biden's policies have hurt Connecticut. Levy, the third candidate in this race, prides herself on lack of elected experience. I am a Hartford outsider, as you can see. All of the entrenched interests in Hartford are aligned against me, attacking me. The RNC committee woman and Cuban native served as ambassador to Chile, nominated in 2019 by then-president Donald Trump. I'm the only principled conservative outsider. I'm not a career politician. I am not a career candidate. Again, whoever wins this Republican primary August 9th will face Blumenthal in November, attempting to unseat over a decade of Democrat control. In the studio, Emma Wolforst, 
Fox 61 News. And if you'd like more information about the primary happening Tuesday, August 9th, text the word vote to the number on your screen, 860-527-6161. You can also go online to fox61.com and the free Fox 61 News app for more on our coverage of this year's primary. And this weekend, be sure to watch Fox 61's Matt Karen host The Real Story. He'll be talking with all three Republican Senate candidates. That is Sunday morning at 10 right here on Fox 61. Senator Chris Murphy criticizes Republican senators for blocking a birth control access bill. In the Senate today, Senator Murphy says GOP lawmakers are trying to reverse many women's rights. This is a pretty coordinated industrial scale effort to bring women under control of the state, to take away decades of rights accumulation from women and put them back where they were in the 1940s and the 1930s. This is a massive coordinated effort by Republicans to put more women under government control. The Right to Contraception Act would protect people's access to contraceptives, and it would also protect health care providers who prescribe them. It passed in the House last week. And right now at 5, West Hartford police have arrested a man after a driver told officers someone pointed a gun at him in a road rage incident. Now that suspect, 53-year-old Christopher Rung, now faces assault charges. Police say the incident began in Simsbury. That's where Rung allegedly cut off the victim while driving aggressively. The victim followed the suspect to LeMay Street in West Hartford. Police say that's when Rung got out of his car with a handgun, walked up to the victim's car and pointed the gun at him, threatening to kill him. Rung faces multiple charges and is being held on $250,000 bond. And new at five, a Torrington man is accused of trying to bring runaway teens across the state uh, to Foxwoods Resort and Casino. Ledyard police say officers arrested 27-year-old Philip Tanner early this morning after he was stopped in a vehicle en route to with four girls, three of whom are younger than 16 years old. Investigators say he drove with them from Torrington to meet up with someone. Investigators also say Tanner had picked up one of the runaways before. He is charged with three counts of risk of injury to a minor. Right now at five, police are investigating a crash on the Wilbur Cross Parkway this morning. One person died. The North Haven Fire Department says a driver veered off Route 15 and hit a tree between exit 63 and 64. The highway was shut down for several hours as crews investigated and cleared that scene. 